What is it, Horatio? What do your wolf eyes see? Oh. Uh oh. What is this? Oh, this is a mess. I don't think we need to sneak. I think it's very asleep. Hmm. It would seem we have attracted some unwanted attention. Some kind of creature has slithered from its nest in the mountains to enjoy our spoils from our growing town. After all the effort of digging out its new lair, making quite a mess as it does so, I suspect this thing is going to sleep for quite a while, which gives us plenty of time to go and set up some defences over at the settlement. We need to be ready for this thing. You did good, bright-eyed Horatio. You did so good. I'm sorry, I just kicked you. I didn't mean to do that. Hope stick makes up for it. But if it weren't for this good boy, who knows how long that beast might have gone unnoticed, just outside of render distance. You have given me an idea. Yes, you have. You're a good boy. Have another stick. First of all, though, I think we're going to have to start with some walls. Probably along this farmland bit just to begin with, and then we can build it up the mountain all the way to the crater. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Yeah. Not that far away. it to be pretty much what it is to be quite cobbled together literally cobble and assembled in a hurry to look like the villagers had put it together in a hurry it isn't this spectacular thing that's been built over years they've seen a monster there it is and they've decided to just shove everything in a line to make a barricade it's uneven it's messy it's made of all different woods I'm quite happy with how it turned out. It's not finished. I will eventually go along and put in decorations. I'll put up, um, I'd quite like to put some walkways at the top so somebody could actually guard it. But I would like to put some buildings in. Just around here, have some villagers' huts and maybe some of the, the farm buildings for the farm down here. So I don't want to build the platforms and have them intrude into where I could potentially put buildings. I'd rather have buildings than platforms. So I'm now going to terraform all of this and get it to be usable. And put some houses on it. Maybe three or four? Three or four little cottages? But first, I need to alter the dirt. It's just Minecraft in a nutshell, really, isn't it? Just alter the dirt. It looks quite nice as you're flying up to it. I think it does need the final touches, but it, it looks okay for now as a, as a foundation. I appreciate that this wall isn't actually that high compared to the monster, but I figured that it's, you know, it's covered in fire and lava and it's set fire to the landscape around it. It doesn't want to cross a river. So far, there is a river between us and it, which I think is going to be a better defence. But I, you can see I need to widen it off here. This isn't even a river, this is just a gap. This is just a shambles. What is this? What is this? Can't get out of here now. But yes, this all out here, this is going to need changing, terraforming. I need to widen the river. Partly because I need to get ships through here later, or at least make it so that ships can come through here, because I want to put a dock around about there-ish. We've still got lots of work to do. But this isn't, this is the kind of mindless hold down a button and break your shovel kind of work, which I actually really enjoy. I enjoy just mining away or gathering resources. I've also set up a very little, uh, what's it called? It, yeah, it's a clay. It's a clay farm. Turning the mud blocks into clay by draining it off with dripstone. And I'm then turning it into terracotta because I, I would like more of the colours. I've got enough dyes that I can get all of the coloured terracotta. But I don't actually have that much of just the plain terracotta, so I'm having to make my own rather than fly all the way back to that mesa biome, which is like 4,000 blocks away. 
On the topic of little farms, do you remember last episode that I said I completely forgot to get the cactus? Because of course I did. Well, a wandering trader came along, so back here, I managed to buy some cactus from him and pop it in here and it all just channels down into this and I've already got quite a lot going. It's very slow, I don't need a lot, I just want some green dye for terracotta and maybe on some sheep to get some green wool because I actually quite like the texture of the green wool, I think it goes very well with a lot of things. I'll end up building a lot of little farms just off these tunnels I actually could do to do cocoa beans. I do have to do a cocoa bean farm and just have that probably... Can I run it off here somewhere? This is a little way to the back of the sugarcane farm. Yeah, I could probably put it in here somewhere. Just have cocoa beans growing in the background. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a way to auto harvest those. I think you have to do it manually, but I come back here often enough to check on this stuff. Again, I just want a little bit of dye. Yeah, it's getting cute. It's getting all cute and overgrown. I like this little section. Now that all the, uh, the vines have grown in and just completely taken over, it's very pleasing. Here we are, we've got a few little areas cleared. We've got a little flat bit here, a flat bit here, and a slightly bigger one here that I might be able to put a couple of buildings on. Where I've got these exposed bits of wall, I've just made it look a little more deliberate, just putting some texture in so it's it looks like it's maybe been shored up by villagers. And I've done a similar thing around here. On this cliff, I've put a little bit of um, intentional texturing on the cliff as well. And there is also... I've also made that cave a little more deliberate because I quite like that one being up there. It gets a nice glow to it at night. A little bit of texturing to the hillside and just some flattening out made the path more direct so I know where it is to connect the buildings to it and also I need to pull the path back through the farmland towards the main buildings because eventually it is going to wind down. There's going to be more buildings around here. There's going to be buildings on the hilltop. There's going to be buildings everywhere. I want lots of them. I want this to be a big thriving village. As I foolishly converted all of the villagers into, well, it wasn't even foolishly, it was unintentionally converted all the villagers into zombies here in the first episode, I have set up a noisy little villager farm here. You can hear them all grumbling away in the neighbouring village. So there's these two. Lock them back in again. And then it's very strange, I have to like limbo under here, but there's just, there's a ton of them down there now. I can't remember how many I've got, but quite a few. And I will need to transfer them across. I think I might do their trades first. Do I want to decide their trades? Maybe. I mean, obviously I need to build the buildings first, but uh, I'm just going to block them out. Whilst I build another room. Obviously I need to build the buildings first, but yeah, should I do their trades and then move them in? I think these ones will just be farmers for now. Maybe some fishmongers since they are kind of down by the water. Fishmongers? Fishermen. You know what I mean. You with me by now. I don't really plan on trading with these particular villagers, so it doesn't matter about converting them to zombies and back again. I can always do that once they're in place anyway, it's just a bit more of a, a bit more of a faff. Oh, hello. Hello. Yes, don't push. Don't push. My poor mending guy's still in here. He's been in here for like a year in-game. He's, he's been in here for hundreds of days, the poor thing. He'll get his own house eventually. But let's actually get on with building some stuff. I know we've done a lot of time lapses today already, but these are going to be the actual building time lapses where we'll see some lovely progress, hopefully.
little village is all done now. Well, this this little bit of the little village is all done now. There's going to be a lot of little bits of little villages everywhere. I'm really happy with how these came out. I had a bit of trouble getting these these corner bits on the roof done. I kept getting getting those wrong. But uh, yeah, I quite like the fact they're a little bit higgledy piggledy. That one's actually missing a bit. Or is it? Or is it just hidden by the leaves? It's just hidden by the leaves. Okay. I didn't really plan on giving them such big gardens, but I sort of entered a weird delirious gardening state and after three hours I came to when the gardens were done. I also added this little pond area. I just felt we needed some water up here. I would like to bring some more water down and we'll uh, eventually get all this settled and decide where the main water courses are going. But that's a nice little starting point. It's very cute. The insides of the houses are all unique, but they're pretty similar. They've all kind of basically got some tables and barrels and a little bed set up. I like putting the curtains on the beds. It makes it feel... I don't know, a lot more cosy. Imagine being all tucked up. Got some piggies. Hi. The cottages actually have their most of their like vegetable bits around the back because I think it just makes more sense that they would have nice presentable gardens at the front and then they'd have their essential gardening at the back. It does however encroach a little bit into where I was planning to put platforms but I actually think that might be quite nice having it all sort of working around and underneath and crops growing under and platforms coming over might be quite interesting. This guy's got the wood cutting stuff and some wood ready to go for his neighbours. Here's the well, which is very deep and there's green growing at the bottom, so yeah, be careful with that. And this last house just has a horse. I've got him tethered here because he kept relentlessly standing on that and getting kind of stuck and just spinning and I was so annoyed. Just stand there and be cute. Thank you. And this last little bit up here is just down to my skeleton farm. I'll do something with this, make it more decorative, but I think I might incorporate it into some sort of maybe access to the platforms or maybe some kind of watchtower. So it's not just some holes in the ground, it'll be a little more discreet. My favourite spot is actually this ditch. I just sort of didn't know what to do with this little patch, so I thought it would just be a little runoff. Um, get some water down here, and it's, it, it's really cute. It's really cute how it's all overgrown. I've put some string on the sugar cane so it stays at um, pleasing levels and doesn't just become very tall. No, I really like how that came out, it's so cute. But I do quite like how when you're running around, looking at the pretty buildings and the pretty gardens, your eye is drawn back to that. It's always there. It's always a reminder. I've actually done so much this episode, it kind of doesn't feel like it, but I have. That's quite a lot of development in one episode. Hmm. Saying that, I think I will actually call it here then, because this is already going to start running on a bit. My next job is to actually move villagers in, which is going to take an eternity, because it always does, and uh, get them in their houses. So I think I will leave that for next episode, and I hope to see you then. Bye! I hope this thing doesn't eat me in the meantime.